Good evening. Welcome to this day in paranormal history. I'm religious demonologist Dave Considine, and every week I'll be bringing you something fascinating about our paranormal past. High Hopes at 112 Ocean Avenue. Today's date in paranormal history is about a case at least everyone knows by name. It is the one that brought the paranormal to the front lines and made supernatural a household word. When it finally went public, the case would go on to shock the world and become the Amityville Horror in books, on TV, and in the movies. On this date in 1975, George and Kathy Lutz closed the deal on a large Dutch colonial home in Amityville, New York. They moved in days later, fully aware that there had been a multiple murder in the home a year before. Within 28 days, they fled the home, literally with the shirts on their backs. At first, life in the home was normal, but within weeks, strange things started to happen. Each member of the family's personalities began to change as they experienced different parts of the demonic infestation. George Lutz would experience a constant coldness that could not be explained, even though he kept the roaring flame going in the fireplace almost all the time. He just could never seem to get warm, and as a result, he was obsessive over keeping the fireplace going. Strange smells would permeate the senses from nowhere, including the smell of rotting meat and sounds some of them as deafening as a marching band would encircle the house along with banging on the walls. Black stains would also keep appearing on the plumbing fixtures, no matter how many times they were removed. On one occasion, a relative of the family, who was also a nun, became violently ill while visiting the home, so much so that she had to leave the property. The children were also affected. Usually it was Lutz's youngest daughter, Missy, who was visited by an unseen creature named Jody, as she called it. Kathy Lutz was also being affected. She would transform into an elderly looking woman physically and would remain this way for hours. At this point, the family realizes that without a doubt, there's something wrong with this home and calls upon the local church for help. Within a few days, a local priest by the name of Father Ralph Pecoraro comes to the home to bless it at the family's request. At first, during the blessing, everything had gone well until it came time to go to the second floor. In one particular room, Father Pecoraro's blessing, he was slapped in the face by an unseen hand and an audible voice tells him, get out. Father Ralph Pecoraro does not tell the family about the incident, but he does tell them not to use the particular room as a bedroom, fearing the news would startle them. Within the next few weeks, the activity in the house becomes so intense that the Lutzes have to flee the home. The total time the family spent in the house was 28 days. They would not return to the home, but remained at Kathy's mother's house in Deer Park, New York. In the days to come, the Lutzes made contact with self-proclaimed parapsychologist, Dr. Stephen Kaplan. During the first meeting with him, he is asked to leave. The reason being is a difference of opinion between George Lutz and Dr. Kaplan. This would be the first and last time the family would have contact with him. During that same time, Ed Lorraine Warren were called in to investigate the home by a local news anchor who knew the Warrens from a prior case they had handled years before. By this time, they were already very well known by their many years of work in the field of psychical research. When the Warrens arrive accompanied by newsman Marvin Scott and Father Ralph Pecoraro, the Lutz family insists on meeting at a different location rather than the house. During the meeting with the Warrens, the Warrens realize why the family chose not to meet at the house. This family was so terrified of what happened in those 28 days that they couldn't even bring themselves to go near it. It took all the courage they could muster just to talk about it. After the interview, Ed Lorraine Warren explained that there would have to be an investigation of the home to determine the course of action that should be taken. During the Warren's investigation of the home, all types of activity occurred, including some of the investigators becoming violently ill. It was determined that the activity in the home was so strong the family was advised not to return. The Lutz family returned the house to the bank, sold all their belongings, with the exception of the cedar box built by George's grandfather that contained photographs of the children, and moved to California. However, the diabolical infestation that began in Amityville did not stop there. It followed them wherever they went, ending years later, only when the exorcist of the Archbishop of Canterbury removed it. Since the incident, George and Kathy have both unfortunately passed away in recent years, each after a long illness. The rest of the family, by all accounts, is doing very well, all grown now, and living full happy lives. In closing, here is a short clip from the TV program, ABC's Primetime Live. In it, George Lutz describes in his own words some of the events he and his family experienced during those 28 days living at 112 Ocean Avenue.
Did you know when you were looking at the house that there had been six murders there a year before? Uh, we went home and we sat around as a family and talked about it for quite a while. And it was decided that that would be okay. But the house's history did unsettle them enough to have a priest, Father Pecoraro, seen here with the Lutz's children, bless the house. Lutz says the priest swore that in one room he felt an unseen hand slap him and heard a loud voice warn him. He heard the words get out very strongly. He became ill. He had flu-like symptoms, his hands bled openly for a while. The priest reportedly has since died, but within days, Lutz says his family also began to notice strange things about their new home. There were odors in the house that came and went. There were sounds. The front door would slam shut in the middle of the night. Lutz says the house was inexplicably cold. He says he kept the fireplace burning night and day in a futile attempt to stay warm. The story of what happened to the Lutz family would later become a best-selling book and a blockbuster movie, The Amityville Horror. It dramatized the Lutz's story, the swarms of flies in the room where the priest claimed to have heard a voice, the front door flying off its hinges, and Lutz's constant chill, and lots of slime oozing everywhere. Lutz says while the movie is at points very exaggerated, all of it is based on reality. What about this slime that we saw so much of in the movie? <laughs> the Hollywood <laughs> movie? The slime was not out of the walls either. It was like gelatin, like drops of gelatin on the carpet going from room to room. And you would get up in the morning and you, that would be there. Lutz says every day brought new horrors, but that the last night in the house was the worst. I'm laying in bed. I'm unable to get up. There's no pressure on me. There's no force holding me down. I'm unable to move. I can hear my children's beds overhead of me slamming up and down on the floor. And I can't get up to help me. How long did that last? All night. And you couldn't move? No. And that's your Paranormal History for Tuesday, December 18th, 38 years ago today. I'm Dave Considine, and thanks for listening to The Grand Dark Conspiracy. For further information on this and other subjects, please feel free to check out The Grand Dark Conspiracy's past guest list at www.granddarkconspiracy.com. And don't forget to check out the GDC on the Ning Network at thegdc.ning.com.